Okay, guys. Today is the day. We're gonna take down the big tree in the forest. Let's go. Hi guys, this is Simeon from Swedish Homestead. Here we're standing at the tree we want to take down and I have my brother Tim with me today. And he's an arborist and has been working in the forest and with tree climbing for many years. And today we want to demonstrate to you how we uh, take down this tree and uh, what are we doing here anyways? Is it, are we just playing around or? Uh, it's a bit luxurious to take down this tree in this manner. It's. Uh... It's a very safe way, which would cost the customer a lot of money. And this is not really the scenario where you would typically use this. But uh, since we have the equipment, we know how to do it, and we enjoy doing it, we're going to go ahead and do it in this way. Okay, so let's start uh, with the chainsaws we're going to use today. First, we have this funny looking chainsaw. Um, do you want to say a little bit what this is? Yeah, it's a steel 200T. It's not the latest model, but it's been popular for many years in the arborist industry. And it's got uh, a handle on the top, so it's meant for tree pruning and particularly tree climbing. And w um, this is just so it's going to hang on your belt? Yeah, so I can't drop it. Yeah, because you need both hands to climb uh, most of the time. Yeah, I need to be able to hang it yeah. on the side of my harness. Okay, and then for the groundwork, we are going to use this um, Swedish Husqvarna chainsaw. Um, is that a good saw? Uh, it's a very good saw. I really like it. It accelerates real nicely and uh, has great power to weight ratio. Yeah, you got some uh, features here. You have heating in the handle, right? Yeah, it's an 18 inch bar on that one and 14 inches on the small one. Okay, wonderful. Well, we have a lot of other equipment that's not very common in normal tree felling. And uh, let's just take a look at this. I actually don't really know all the things that we are using here. So I'm gonna have my brother explain it to us. Okay, so here you just laid the stuff down on the ground for us so you can uh, explain it a little better. So what do we have in front of us? If you imagine this is the top of the tree, we're gonna have this white and red rope as our lowering rope. We'll attach our branches to the end and then lower them down and this is the lowering device at the bottom of the tree where you can take, take wraps uh, that create friction so it's not hard at all to hold on to the piece and you can lower it very... Oh, so, so with this piece of equipment um, even if the branches are really uh, heavy you have good control over them? You have, yeah, exactly. Okay. And up here we will run it through these two rings um, in the top of the tree. And then in order to get the branch away from the trunk and away from the little spruce trees here out to the where the chipper will be parked we'll have this yellow rope uh, it's a speed line and the branch will be attached here and this rope in turn will be attached through the yellow rope uh, to the yellow rope with this red pulley here and it will slide down away from the trunk. Okay, so this is basically like a zip line, speed line. but you call it speed line in, in tree climbing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this, these are the spruce trees he was talking about. You know, we are bringing up the next generation. Actually, we have a two generation forest system here where you have the pioneering trees, the aspen, and then underneath you have the spruce trees, which grow fine in uh, shade. So we don't want to damage either of them. So that's also one reason why we take down the tree this way. And we're going to use that speed line to bring the branches down safely all the way to the road so we don't damage any of these uh, young spruce trees. So um, how are you going to get up the tree? I see you're holding something in your hand. What's that? Well, this is a tree removal so we do not have to worry about damaging this tree. So I can use my climbing spikes or spurs uh, which I'll strap onto my legs and there's this uh, gaff here that will penetrate the bark and sit on the trunk and I'm gonna take steps and climb up the tree on those with a short lanyard attached to my uh, 
climbing harness around the trunk that will uh, keep me from falling back as I climb up on the, on the spikes. Then I'll also have a climbing rope uh, that will be attached to the top of the tree that will allow me to get around in the tree uh, even out on the side branches sometimes and will also uh, provide a uh, escape route should something happen I can go all the way down to the ground uh, very quickly on my climbing line. Okay so um, you said the top is a little dark there and that could be a bad spot so um, obviously want to avoid that. Well, the reason we are removing this aspen is because they tend to um, get decayed when they go and get older. So as I make my way up there I want to look out for those kind of things and if I find something really bad we might have to come up with a different plan. We'll, we'll chip up the branches and, and, and if there's some wood that's okay we're gonna actually sell it to the paper industry right? Yeah, if it's good enough, otherwise it'll have to be energy wood, which will also be chipped by a big chipper. Okay. And uh, then heated in some okay. uh, big furnace somewhere. Now, if you look carefully, you can actually see the weight there. And now my brother is pulling the line in to see if it was at the right spot. All the way up there, I'm trying to zoom in and hold still. How was the shot? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. So now you're trying to, to get the way to go down the tree That's right, yeah. so you can pull up your rope. Well, of course, I'll have to separate a good branch so it's, it's isolated. There's nothing between the part of the throw line that comes down there and this one that I'm holding. I only want one branch, the one that I'm going to attach to. Okay. So the other ones don't get in the way while I'm climbing up. And I'm still not sure that this was a good shot. We'll have to see. Okay, let's go look. This is looking very good. So, what do you say? Yeah, we got it with the first shot. First shot, <laughs> amazing. It doesn't happen every day. That doesn't happen every day, but it happens when we ma are making a video. Let's just say for the people watching that we are this good, okay? <laughs> okay, so throw line is in position. Now, what are you doing? I'm installing my climbing line. First, I'm going to pull up this uh, sling. It's called a friction saver or cambium saver. Okay, so you're going to connect that. You're taking off the weight yeah. and you're going to connect this thing and you're going to pull up the climbing rope with that. First the sling and then... First the sling. Then the climbing rope afterwards. Okay. There are a lot of knots and a lot of technique involved here. Safety, technique, and knowledge, experience, that's what's so important here. So, so w w just wait a second here, because I don't get it and I don't think most of my viewers will either. How have you put the ropes through this ring now? There's a big and a small ring. Uh-huh. And I That's the weight, you just simply pull, pull it up. through the small ring uh -huh. and attach the weight back through it. Okay, so you, you can pull it up this way and then when you let go of the throw line, it'll come down. The branch is over here now and as I pull it up, this part will be pulled over the branch and down. Okay. And then those two rings will be hanging there together. It's kind of I hard see. to see. I uh, see. And, and how will you get the rope up there? That's why you have the throw line through the ring still, right? Yeah, because the weight will come back down and then I can attach the my climbing line. That's genius. I wish I had a drone and could get some good footage from above. Time to bring out the climbing rope. Yeah, so we, we just got the sling over the branch. The throw rope is still through those two rings. It's getting the climbing rope and gonna pull it up through those rings. And that is the first big step to be able to go up there. So this rope, is it a just normal climbing rope or? It's not a rock climbing rope. It's not a rock climbing, tree climbing rope. rope yeah. It's a tree climbing, what is the difference? You rock, can. In rock climbing, you have dynamic ropes because uh, they. If you fall, you want the, it to catch your weight softly. That's right. Gently. And here you always hang in your rope. There's always supposed to be tension on your climbing so it's, line. So is it called a static rope or what is it it's called? Semi static. It's not supposed to be all the way static. In you can have small falls. You can have small falls, okay. But, uh, there the climbing rope is going up.
Okay, so we got the climbing rope into place. And this gives us a good idea how tall this tree is because this climbing rope is 150 feet tall and it's laying double, which means 75 feet to where the rope is attached. And I would say that it is another 30 feet from where the rope is to the top of the tree. Maybe not 30 feet, maybe 20 feet. But it is a tall tree that we will have to take down here. <laughs> 